<laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, 1991 Acura NSX the NA1 generation owned by my buddy Fenton Sun from the Zygreen YouTube channel, aka the Zypoppy. And this car has been on the channel a few times before. But today, what we're testing is how the JDM short gear kit, that's the second through fourth gears are shortened, which changes the final drive from 4.235 versus the stock 4.062. It's about a 5% shorter uh, ratio across all gears. How's that change the driving experience? Because the NA1 NSX is held in very high regard for a very good reason. And I mean, stock, it has its issues, but you gotta remember this car is from the early 90s. So with modern technology and Fenton has done a great job modifying this, right? It drives really well. And one of the issues I had previously was, you know, just the gearing was a bit off. And the question is, does the gearing address one of those lingering issues? Now, in terms of other modifications, full mod list down in the description, as always. We have a June lightweight flywheel, Sake Bomb Olin's Grand Touring coilovers, AK front, 6K rear, AP Racing front big brake kit as well, and Sake Bomb custom rear brake kit, same calipers, but larger rotors. He's running Ferrodo DS2500 pads. We've got these Advan RZ2 17 by eight in the front, 18 by 10 in the rear, wrapped in Falcon RT615K plus, 215 in the front, 265 in the rear. Pride V2 RFL exhaust, standing for really loud, which you gotta love. And the sound I gotta say is on point. Koyo radiator, Momo tuner, 350 millimeter wheel with the works belt short hub. Science of Speed shift knob and the DeFi ZD gauge mounted behind the radio screen. Of course, interior inspired by an F-16 cockpit. This is a bit of a process here. You wanna get the the electronics on, wait a few seconds, and then start the engine for the fuel pump to start working first, as Fenton was explaining. A few quirks here and there with an older vehicle, right? So we're gonna be careful. He also said to be slower shifting between gears just because of the, the worn down synchros. So we'll be probably doing a bit of double clutching today. Gotta love the interior. Super focused design. I mean, everything is just positioned. Ergonomics are on point. Look how close that shifter is to the steering wheel. Very purpose built, you can tell. I actually kind of think the Amira is a newer spiritual version of the original NA1 NSX, but that's a topic for another video. Today, we're gonna focus on the two main changes. One is the gearing. Also, he has the Type R LSD. So it has a more aggressive locking. So with that higher breakaway torque, we're gonna get a little bit more understeer on corner entry, but hopefully more traction, more power being put down on corner exit. Double wishbone, all four corners. Manual, unassisted rack. Three liter, naturally aspirated V6. Making 270 horsepower, 210 pound-feet of torque. All the ingredients for an excellent driving experience recipe. First impressions, I love the steering because you get so much communication with this unassisted rack. It's gonna be a slower ratio, of course, because it's unassisted, but you can just see this thing wiggle and chatter away in my hands over all these bumps. Heavier, a heavier weight to the, to the steering as well, which I don't mind. Pilot by Bulova, the second watch worn on the moon. And if you want to learn how to double clutch and double clutch heel joint at the same time, as we may be doing from time to time in this video, we just did a couple back there, check out the How to Drive Stick Shift playlist that goes over all the techniques from beginning to advanced.
I'm just enjoying the experience. Let me tell you, I mean, oh God, these, these cars are held in high regard for very good reason. The transmission, one of the absolute best, this and the Honda S2000, the two best transmissions that I've ever used. So mechanical, notchy. The cliche of bolt action rifle is, is very much fitting. The steering, it loads up, it chatters, it communicates, the feedback, everything is so spot on. Yes, slower ratio, but you don't feel, you don't feel like that's an issue. It's, 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 it's uh, yes, the ratio is slower and you need to adjust to that. But once you do, it feels very natural. Of course, heavier weighting with the unassisted rack. Great throttle response. Not all of these uh, double clutch downshifts with heel toe are perfect, but considering that this is the first time we're driving this hard in a long time, it's it's pretty natural. It's pretty easy to get in and drive this car. That really tight polar moment of inertia engine right behind me, so it rotates well. Double wishbone all four quarters. You get that sharper front end. We have to keep in mind with the more weight back here than over the front. You don't want the mid engine car to bite you if you're lifting off while you're really loaded up in the corner. But we're not pushing the car that hard today. We're just on the canyon. It's not on track. But for those wondering, yeah, the. The short gearing makes a big difference. You're no longer frustrated by being stuck in second gear and not in VTEC. And the, the difference is pretty substantial, especially in second gear, because in second gear, I think originally it topped out around 81 miles an hour. Now it's like 69. Nice, which is also 12 miles an hour less. I mean, that's a huge difference, right? It's gonna feel a little bit more peppy too. The acceleration, because of that shorter gearing. I remember the first time I ever drove this car, I didn't fall in love and I think part of it was because it was closer to stock back then and also I had different expectations for the NSX. Amazing steering, amazing transmission, 
great inputs, great throttle response, great chassis balance and dynamics. You do need to modify the car a little bit with the brake suspension to get it to the more modern era technology-wise. So you don't feel the, um, the limitations of the technologies from the 1990s and you know late 80s when this thing was being developed. What a special car. I do think spiritually this is closer to the Lotus Amira than a lot of people would expect. And if you want to see that comparison, we will be doing a NSX NA1, this example, against a uh, sport suspension Lotus Amira. Make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss that. Fenton will be swapping out the wheels tomorrow to TE37s. A little bit more of a classic JDM look. But man, what a special car. My friends, let me know what you think of the NA1 NSX. Do you agree that Fenton has modified this well? Because I think it is quite tastefully done, if I do say so myself. Much love. See you all in that next one.